Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 19 of We the Revolution. It is day two of the third act. Uh, we already read the letter of Germaine de Stael. We're going to meet her in the evening. Let's see what this women uprising wants from us. Okay, what? Oh, okay, so this is the this is something that that she sent to prepare, probably. Okay, well then, let's read this. Women are born free and shall remain equal to men in rights. Social distinctions can only be founded on common necessity. Why are there like, why is there like point one and then there's point five? Or does this mean something else? The laws of nature and reason stand against all malign actions against society. All that is not defended by those laws, however wise and divine, cannot be prevented and none shall be preferred. None shall be forced to do what they do not order. The law should express the general will. All female citizens and citizens should take part directly or via representatives in its conception. It must be the same for everyone. All citizens, regardless of gender, being equal in its eyes, should be equally allowed all public dignities, duties and employments according to their competency, with no distinctions other than those of their virtues and of their capabilities. I mean, that is a good idea oh, but this no one should be harassed for their thoughts and opinions regardless of how fundamental they are if women have the right to mount a scaffold then they must have the same right to mount a tribune provided that what they say will not disturb public order as it is stated by the law I can agree to that. The free communication of thoughts and opinions is one of the most precious rights that the woman possess because this liberty ensures legitimacy to fathers towards their children. All female citizens should be able to freely say, I am the mother of a child that you own, without any barbaric prejudice forcing her to veil that truth, but only to answer to any abuse of that liberty in the case established by the law. Post amble women arise the toxin of reason is echoing throughout the universe know your rights the powerful empire of nature is no longer bound by prejudice fanaticism superstition and lies the flame of truth has dissipated the clouds of foolishness and usurpation enslaved man has multiplied his strength but needed yours to finally break his chain and while he is now free he has become unjust to his companion oh women women when will you cease to be blind what advantage have you harvested from the revolution and even more pronounced scorn and even more marked contempt during the centuries of corruption you could only rule over the weakness of men the reclamation of your patrimony based on the humble decrees of nature what have you to fear from such a fine pursuit the bon mot of the legislature at the marriage at cana do you fear that our French legislators, protectors of that morality long ensnared by a dated political convention will only repeat to you? Women, is there something in common between you and us? Everything shall be your answer, and if they persist in their feebleness in putting this fallacy in contradiction to their principles, boldly oppose the force of reason to the empty vanity of superiority, unite yourselves beneath the ideals of philosophy, deploy all the spirit of your character, and soon you will see these imperious men not at your feet as abased adorers, but as equals, proudly sharing with you the treasures of the Supreme Being. Do not mind the barriers that confront you, for you have in your power to pass them and free yourselves. You need only to want to. Let us move on and gaze on the frightful position that women held in society. Given that national education is now being discussed, let us see if our wise legislators will be rational when considering the education of women. Women have done more harm than good. Constraint and deceit have been their tools. What force seized from them, ruse gave back. They had to use their charms and even the most virtuous men could not resist. The poison, the sword, all submitted to them. They had command over crime as well as virtue. The French government, more than most, lent for centuries on the nocturnal administration of women. No secrets could survive the inquisitive nature of the bourgeois. Ambassadors, officers, ministers, presidents, pontiffs, cardinals, all the disguises that characterize the idiocy of men, sacred or profane, all are subject to the greed and ambition of the sex once despicable yet respected, but since the revolution respectable and despised. Okay, that was one. What's the second one? That was a lot to 
prestige and justice, the supervisors of this noble building find those two virtues essential. Prestige and justice are superior to anything else. The day before yesterday, I had the pleasure of having a few drinks with one of your guards and we talked about our memories. You are aware that serving in the army is an essential requirement for joining the court guard. It is non-negotiable, so this guard must have sold us a tissue of lies about his military service and the certificate he managed to get is probably forged. Of course, we had we had had a few drinks. Wait, so who is this letter from? Well, you know what, whatever. Let's investigate the matter. We have some points to spend. So, it has been a while that we have a normal trial again. There have been a few days with only those short trials left. So why are you here? And everyone wants him killed, I see. Okay, he's here for assault, murder and theft. Okay. In the dock is Etienne Lebeau, a brawler and degenerate resident of Paris and frequent client of sordid public houses in Faubourg de Gloire. Last month, together with his comrade Michel Verdier, he attacked another drinking partner, Jean Boudon. A witness who saw everything claims that Lebeau and Verdier ambushed their victim when he was returning to the attic where he used to sleep. They attacked Boudon in a dark alley, battered him, took his money and then stabbed him. Soon afterwards, Verdier was detained. During routine questioning, he admitted to participating in the assault. Even though he swore that it was Le Beau who pushed the knife into Boudon, Verdier was sentenced to be guillotined. Meanwhile, Le Beau vanished into thin air. Apparently, he holed up in Neuilly. Upon his arrest, the rogue recited what we have already heard, swearing that Verdier was responsible for stabbing Boudon. Le Beau had with him an elegant pouch that was almost empty. It surely did not belong to him. Evidence and knife taken from Le Beau. Interesting. So this is like the only evidence that we have. I mean, I think we only have one choice. Even if he didn't murder him, what he did was really bad. I mean, it was like assisted murder, so it's not really innocent. Okay, well then, let's see. Uh, the knife taken from Le Beau is definitely the evidence. Attack on a drinking partner is maybe the method? No, okay. Really? Oh, this starts off so bad again. Okay, well murder is definitely the accusation. What? Come on! Okay, then murder is the method. And the attack on the drinking partner is the accusation. Yes. So, the- oh wait, oops. The embroidered pouch is probably evidence because it was on him, but it is nothing that lies in front of us, so maybe it is also a motive. Although we don't know that this pouch belonged to the murder victim, so maybe it is. I think I'll go for it. I will go with evidence first. Yes, now the murder can only be the motive. Okay, who? So, what do you say for yourself? We'll lose your head, scum! I'm Etienne. I did not allow the accused to speak yet. I don't care. Oh well, you're going to be that way. Well, mm, with the most respect, of course. Of course. Considering the behavior of the accused, I think I already know the verdict. I hate to agree with you, Tinville, but maybe. Death! Behead him! The guillotine! Chill out, people. I haven't even asked one thing yet. Where did you first meet the victim? You know, we were drinking together for a few months. Bit of a strange bird, that fella. He painted some things, kind of a merchant too. Always had money and happy to buy the next round. And you killed such a great companion without scruples? How many times do I have to say it? I didn't kill nobody anyway. Everyone knew Verdier was a beast. You knew that as well, and nonetheless decided to join him? The accomplice of a beast is an animal as well. Verdier claimed during his trial that it was you who had blood on his hands. A guilty man who always tries to blame someone else. Then let's go with this. Do you admit to assaulting Citizen Boudon? Well, there's no use lying when everyone knows it. Yeah, me and Verdier ambushed him. To kill him. To rob him, nothing more. I didn't think Verdier would kill him. Murderer! But you did not stop him, did you? 
What am I, the National Guard? He'd have cut me as well. He deserves to be rotting underground. When the guards searched you, they found an embroidered pouch. Where did you get it? From him, Budon. You searched his pockets while he was bleeding to death in the street? No. I battered him so he couldn't stand, took his pouch and turned round to run. That's when Verdier stabbed him. You kept hitting him until he lost consciousness. How else would I rob him? <laughs> You're not making a lot of friends here, buddy. You could have killed him doing that anyway. But I didn't. Just robbed him. He's lying. You killed him, thug. Why would he do that? You had already taken his money. You shouldn't have chopped off his head. Can't ask him now, can you? <laughs> that wasn't me, though. Just saying. A bloodstained pocket knife was found at the crime scene. Did you use it to stab Citizen Boudon? No, the guards took me knife. What? Why did you have a knife with you? Because he's a murderer. Because of, you know, stuff. Sometimes it comes in handy. <laughs> like cutting apples, maybe. For example, when the need arises to stab a fellow citizen. Or that. I didn't stab him, understand? Not with me knife, not with anyone's knife. If I wanted to slaughter him, I'd do it with me bare hands. I wonder how many he's already slaughtered. You're not getting out of this, so... Even if you didn't, even if you haven't been the one to stab him, you still assaulted him pretty badly, so... often Because there is not really a difference between the charges of guilty. There's not really a big spectrum here, so I guess you're gonna lose your head too, and we all never find out what happened. So you still claim that it was Verdier who murdered Citizen Boudon? Yes. The lying rat? But it was you who battered and robbed him. It was his idea to rob Boudon, because they'd argued about something. When I took his pouch, it weren't that full. That doesn't make it better. Why would Verdier ask you to join him? If he had assaulted Boudon alone, he could have kept all the money for himself. That is true. Oh, uh, well. Maybe he was scared to go alone? Seriously, you just described him as a monster. A professional criminal, scared to rob a man alone? You should have asked Verdier before you offed him. It weren't in his head, you know. He joined in himself to get a share. Yeah, there is something definitely strange about this, so... Let's not, let's not waste a lot of time with this. So, did the con defendant confess to the crime? Well, the... S yes! He didn't confess to the murder, but he wasn't only on trial for murder, so let's say yes. Was his act counter-revolutionary? I guess not. Although maybe it was. Which one of the assailants took the victim's pouch? He did. The defendant. How did the defendant first meet the victim? They used to drink together. I sentence citizen Etienne Lebeau to death by guillotine. Congratulations on a just verdict. Thank you, Tinville. Huzzah! That rascal had it coming. Oh, re yeah, really? Now he didn't confess to the... Oh. Okay, well, bye then. See you at the guillotine. I definitely don't need to hold a speech for this, do I? I mean, it should be obvious. He's a murderer. He murdered someone, or he assisted in the murder of someone, so... Chop it off already, it's getting dark. Hmm. Okay. Oh, that's her. I promise not to take long. My case is rather obvious. Of course. I'm sure that nothing worse could come of this. <laughs> yeah. Changes. You do not like them, especially when you know they will happen soon. What kind of changes? The liberation of women, of course. I do not understand. Who is oppressing you? You! 
Men who have decided to rule over the country and take control of our fates, the Declaration of Women's Rights clearly explains it. Of course, your famous declaration, your legacy. I have only given a few suggestions regarding that document as I have another duty, leading women to their ultimate success. Over the corpses of men, I assume. It does not have to be so. The declaration must be accepted in its current form. We refuse to negotiate and will not agree to any settlements. If you resist, we will protest and you will learn what it is like to fight without our support. Convincing people to accept such a great change, especially now. Since I first heard about you, you have done nothing but manipulate and scheme. I am sure you will manage. Remember that without us you will lose, but with us you may stand a chance. That is all we want. Equality. I believe that you overestimate women's power, madame. I have yet to see any of you on the battlefield, although the fight is supposed to be even. What is more important is whether or not you are ready to risk our revolt. You know what we want. We shall give you a chance to think it through. Goodbye, citizen. Okay, um, I think the last time we did some barricades, so I think now I want to do, I want to go with the safe path. Let's do that. Let's save some people. The number, okay. Oh no, it's because I had no one standing there. Okay, well maybe then I need to... What the hell? Oh, okay. Okay, I think I'm just gonna... Defend those districts now. Madame de Stael has used the city's moment of weakness to fight for women's rights. Okay, we already know that. De Stael's proposition, or perhaps blackmail, forces us to take immediate and spontaneous action. She wants us to sign the Declaration of Women's Rights. If you comply without the support of other men, you may as well sign your own death sentence. You must convince them to accept the changes and give away the power they have promised their sons. Well, I mean, as if we don't have another problem at this point. <laughs> but I guess when it rains, it pours. I am not really good at this fighting thing, I think. I don't know if I set it up wrong in the beginning, or... I don't know. Oh, okay. Only small cases today. Then let's see. Count Marianne Lajoie, 84 years old, and his servant Alain Asselin were caught in a graveyard trying to steal a coffin containing the remains of Honorine Lajoyer, the Count's late wife. Let us add that she was decapitated for counter-revolutionary propaganda. So they just dug her up. What's the crime about that? Meh. Lisa Mesny has been illegally selling magic potions to young pregnant women. The substance facilitated miscarriages. We searched her house and found a number of empty bottles, striped herbs, and a large amount of money hidden under the floor. Well, then I guess... That's not right to do. Juliette Chapuis, the beloved daughter of a wealthy industrialist, poisoned her father so as to inherit his money sooner. We were informed about the plot conjured up by Juliette and the mysterious men after the burial of Gaspard de Chapuis by his brother Jean-Louis. We heard this after the burial by his brother. Maybe the brother had his hand in it too, but I mean this does sound... I don't know. Emile Plemelding, an impo impoverished baron, forced his wife to spend the night with a man to whom he was in debt after an unlucky card game. The woman came to us to denounce her husband. That bastard will not stop at this, announced Miss Plemelding. 
Yeah, no, that's not right. Don't sell your wife. Farmer Didier Berlioz had a quarrel with Perrine Giraud, who was cultivating a neighboring field. At night, Berlioz set the field alight. As a result, several dozen acres of crops belonging to various farmers went up in flames. That is not mere vandalism, that is acting to the detriment, to the detriment of France. Treason. So, I guess... I know that he didn't kill anyone or something, but I mean, seriously, a lot of people got to harm from that. Wishing to get a promotion in the ordnance foundry, Abraham Toutin told his superiors that his foreman had been sentenced to the guillotine for murder. The information hasn't turned out to be false. Ah, uh, no. So let's see what happens today on the battlefield. They want to rule. What are they thinking? I'll beat some sense into my wife later. <laughs> oh no. Just prepare our food and bear our children. No women will rule us. Remember your place, or we will help you. Oh well, they aren't too on board with this whole women equality thing. I'm gonna spend my points now. Oof, okay. Um, oversensitive is manipulation. Bullheaded is humility. I think withdrawn was aggression. The revolution was supposed to give everyone equal status. Only real brotherhood can bring us victory. Okay. Should be good, right? Come on, men of Paris. Admit it. You did not expect this. And neither did I. They attacked when we were not looking. And now we have to give in to them. I know your blood is up, but the truth is, they do not want much. This consent will cost you little. Have you had too much to drink again? You are speaking as if we don't know our women well. They will walk all over us if we consent to this. Oh, great. There is no time for such discussions, citizens. The enemy is in the streets. While you ponder whether your wives deserve to stop being treated like servants or slaves. But we can't treat them any better! <laughs> what an explanation is that? Thanks to the revolution, you men have won equality and freedom. But women have remained in the background. They support us. But as soon as we get our rest, we drive them into a corner. Is this how we want to treat our women? I do you want to go back do. to the old world and the old ways? If not, remember you shouted the slogan Freedom, Equality, Brotherhood. Brotherhood, damn it! What are the slogans worth if you refuse to share what you have with women? Well, now you've confused us. What on earth made you negotiate with hags? I hope this works. Please. Yes, it was a success. Okay. Whew. Ooh. Rule of women. They can have a brothel. Let them rule that. For the glory of the new world. I don't think that that went well. So provisions and medicine, will this be good to... Oh, let's just try. I don't really know what what does, so we don't really have, to have a direct input of what action here does what later in the battlefield. So let's see if our defenses here did something good. Okay. 
a logistics specialist. Um, okay, whatever that means. Um, so they're going to attack here. I can't send anyone from the new guys there, can I? Or, they, or him, no. Oh well, then let's fight this battle. He's not that great, is he? Well, then we're both not that great, so you you lose. Um Okay, he'll going he's going to lose too. Oh we really if we really are the general here, we are really going to fight. The longer you hold out in the battle, the more people you will save. Oh, okay. Well, you know, then let's just go with defense as, li as long as we can. Oh well, that doesn't hold long. I mean, we're going to lose anyway in this round, so... We didn't die? Didn't they use their cannons? Why not? Well, that's too bad. I mean, it saves a few people at least. So, I mean, here they are a little bit protected. This one is empty though. Although as long as these two districts are protected, this one should be too. This is one of the good, better guys, right? Hmm, I mean, they need some support too, the city guards, so... Let's give them some, f some front row people as well. Although, this is like a bigger number of people here. And we managed to save this district for us. I just need to take care of my capital too. So I think I'm gonna put the artillery here. Maybe my city guard as well. Then I'll put some infantry in this place. I just have to neglect this part a little bit because I think it's more dangerous if they take over this one, this area here. I don't know if this area could reach out to this one, so maybe this one is safe so far too and I can wait for the next round. Artillery too, so I'm going to put the infantry there and the musketeers here. Oh wait, there's one left, so maybe I'll just put one. Oh, this is full. That's why I couldn't add anyone. This is also second row, like he is. You know, I'll just add him to here. So I don't know, that was a success, but it didn't really sound like one. Madame de Stael counts on unity among women. Let us show her that female unity is as fragile as the bonds between men. When power and money are at stake, empathy and compassion cease to be important. Of all the women who could have something on Madame de Stael, Grace Elliot would be the most efficient. She knows the Madame's world well. There is no time for subtleties. Imprison her, then promise to let her go in exchange for information. What? She has been our friend for so long and now we're going to arrest her for information? Ugh. We are such scumbags. Well, I did lose a lot of reputation today. Huh, well... I think by now this is like just staying alive, sort of. 
or making it through. What about this? What could have been drunken ramblings turn out to be true. It must have been quite a burden for the man. Luckily, he finally found someone he could trust. Me. I resolved the matter discreetly. The certificate of military service was forged, and to be certain, I asked people who should have known him from the army. Apparently, nobody ever thought such things should be checked. Who would have thought someone could lie about such a thing? It appears that the man really wanted this job. Is he like a spy from our brother? Although our brother was in the army, would he really have forged some army certificate? He really just wanted this job so bad? You know, let's be kind. The wrong solution again, I suppose. Oh, well, our hierarchy is broken. Your brother never died. He enlisted into the army after his banishment. However, he deserted during the battle. Since then, he has worked at taking vengeance upon his family, on your father. Bruno was the actual source of your misery. He planned your journey and motivated you the entire way. You know, that is true. I thought about it a little bit more and everything that we did, every person that we went after with our intrigues, it was because Ramel whispered it to us, because Ramel told us to. We even got rid of Gobel, although he wasn't involved in our son's murder. And we believed him when he said it was a mistake, he didn't know. It was really well hidden. So Ramel guided us to who we have to destroy next all the time. Yeah, it's kind of true. So, who are you today? She's accused of murder. Oh, they all want her dead. The daughter of Jean and Marie Pic died immediately after birth. The father testified that he heard the child crying loudly and intensely. Yet when he entered the room occupied by his wife, one servant and the midwife, his daughter was not breathing. The doctor called by Mr. and Mrs. Pic arrived the next day. He noticed strangulation marks on the infant's neck and he was the one who informed the guard. The investigator was unable to interrogate the parents as they were both in shock and filled with despair. We found numerous signs of the birth in the untidy bedroom. Among them were forceps left by the midwife, who, as we learned from the servant, left in a great hurry. It looked as though she, was, she were escaping. We managed to establish the midwife's identity as Claudine Cessier. People say she has bad luck when it comes to delivering girls, as most of her infant female patients did not make it. We decided to arrest her as a suspect. Investigators found an open Bible on her kitchen table. Evidence this year's Bible is an old, cheap and worn out edition. She had underlined numerous excerpts and pencils. Okay, so the question is if the midwife killed the child. Well then, let's see. Let's find out. So maybe the Bible belongs to the offender's personality. Maybe being a servant was a method? It couldn't be an instrument of crime, right? Oh, okay, that was- oh, there are a lot of traps here. So the instrument of the crime could be this forceps, right? Yes. And the method could be the strangulation marks, right? So the first cry could have been the second trap. Let's hope. Yes. Midwife Cissier. Aye, that's me. Did you strangle Mr. and Mrs. Peake's child? I had to, Monsieur le Judge. Unfortunately, the child was born a girl. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, great. She doesn't even deny it. You will burn in hell. What do you mean? You're a man. You wouldn't understand. I just want women to stop suffering. Then why do you strangle them? As I said, you wouldn't understand. She's crazy. I think I'm gonna agree with the people here today. I mean, there's not even the opinion to impose her as a good person. Was the child born alive? Yes, Monsieur Le Josh. Did you strangle it with your own hands? No, I, I have a special bead necklace. It would be faster if I just broke their necks, but I'm not able to do it. Oh my god, that is so horrible. That is so brutal. Ew. I put forward a proposal to immediately conclude this interrogation with a death sentence. I know... Not yet, citizen. How could you do something so terrible? So so terrible? I do it for them, Monsieur Le Judge, not for myself. I have suffered enough, and they will not have to. Oh well, she is a little bit crazy. Do you believe in God, woman? 
No, Monsieur le Judge. Why does she have a Bible then? What about the Bible in your house? The Bible is not a holy book, but a manual for men so they can ruin our lives. Explain. The letter to the Ephesians, for example, instructs wives submit yourselves to your husbands as you do to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife. Men hear that in church and then treat women worse than animals. But are you not doing worse by killing them? I'm helping them. Oh boy, how exactly? Men are dying in the war, so there are fewer and fewer of them, so women have to fight over them. If there are fewer women, men will finally begin to respect them. That is like a really big plan to execute for one person. That woman is possessed. Did men not respect you? My father gave me to a man. He bet me for eight years until he finally drunk himself to death. The revolution stands against religious superstition. You do not have to. Does it? You fight for brotherhood, but you don't care for your sisters. I'm about to solve that. Why did you leave the peak's house in such a hurry? The child was dead. There was nothing more I could help them with. Ha! Huh, yeah, you helped them. Did you charge them for the birth? No, I couldn't. Why? Let me ask you again. Why did you not take money from Mr. and Miss Peak? Stop tormenting me. I didn't do it for myself. I just want other women to have a better life than me. If there are fewer of us than men, our thousand-year nightmare will come to an end. I guess this is not the right way to solve this problem, right? That tiny girl's whole short life was a nightmare. Yeah, um, I'm just gonna do this quick as well. I mean, seriously, this is like so messed up in so many ways. Yeah, she did confess to the crime. Was it counter-revolutionary? No. What did the woman confess? She... Her husband had been beating her. What did she use? Uh, a necklace. Did the defendant accept money for delivery? No, she refused. Citizen says, yeah, you will fill me with disgust and it is with great relief that I sentence you to death. Wow, we have never had those direct words, but I suppose it's kind of true. That's not enough, have her quartered. Ooh. Well, if someone else comes up with a new machine, I will sleep better knowing that she is not practicing her profession. Yeah. I mean, should I hold a speech for that? It would be nice because she murdered a, a newborn girl just because she didn't want her to suffer from the inequality for women so let's speak i mean we could use some influence points and carefree is carelessness so what will come of that oversensitive was manipulation and the revolution Okay, no, we have eight points. Let's do, let's do that. Attached is also manipulation. Okay, I think this should be good. The convict was curious about the taste of crime. Now we shall give him his dessert. It's not even mentioning exactly what crime the punished committed, so... These offenders want to go back to the old ways. They defend them. No, I... Uh, that's too bad. The reign of the previous rulers whose goal was to bring injustice to the people ends with their swift deaths. Oh, that's too bad. I I want, I thought that maybe we could hold a speech now that, it, that we will do something better for women. But hey, we gained some reputation, which we desperately need for our fight. Yet another man hurting women. Patriarchy. Well, you kind of brought that upon yourself. Bye. Did you come to visit the English whore? That's the new code name they gave me in prison. I'm so sorry, Gras. The guard should not- Oh, this whole revolution of yours shouldn't. But this is who you are. If I ever get out of here, I will charge you triple. What do you want? To offer you absolution. Since you came to offer it, you must want something in return. What? 
Madame de Stal. I'm not a panderer, sorry. The only thing I can currently give you is a rat that I killed yesterday. I'm not feeling all that hungry recently. Yet, you are the only person that can help me. That can help Paris. Do you remember when someone stabbed you in the middle of the street and I stitched you up? Did I still not help you enough? I mean, that is so true. She saved our lives and all, and now we need some, we need something else from her. We need a favor, and the way that we want to achieve this is by locking her up and so to blackmail her into giving us information. Are you kidding me? We are such jerks. I hate us. Also, she has a very pretty voice. She has a prettier voice than I could ever make up, so... Uh, carefree. We have seven points. Let's use it. Withdrawn was aggression. And attached was manipulation. Yeah, let's go. We should be good. No single Parisian is lacking evidence that can be used against them. Tell me, what can we charge her with when the need arises? I'm not asking for the truth, only something that would be convincing. Oh no, I, I, oh damn it, I, I accidentally skipped it, I'm sorry. You must have something. Do not lie to me. Ask however many times you wish. I can't give you what you want, because I don't have it. Do you really wish to spend so many more months in this place? Help me and I will help you. The style will get burned trying to blackmail me and the people who fight for the freedom of Paris. Though I would delight in making sure she stays in the fire for longer. Since there is no evidence of her crime, I'll create it. Let me go. And I'll arm you with a charge strong enough to destroy anyone, even someone as innocent as de Stahl. Seriously, at this point I just hope that she betrays us in the end and that she stops us. This is like such a low move from us. Hmm, what shall we do now? Maybe, uh, let's save some more refugees. I mean, we just offer her help to get her out from a situation that we got her into in the first place, so what's going on there? Oh no, I knew it. He's co they're coming here. Oh well, um, a lot of fights, but it was a good thing that I enforced here. Which battle should I start? Probably this one. No, let's do it ourselves, because I found out that it's a little bit better if we do it ourselves. Maybe. Ooh! We have really strong troops there, so we should be good with defense. So everyone can get out. So a lot of people can get out. Are we really winning this right now? Also, I mean, we just killed every one of them. Who is operating their cannons?
Yes! Nice! We won! That is so cool. That is so awesome. I'm feeling pretty good right now. Um, well then, let's do this battle too. We have the more effective troop here. You know, I'm just gonna do it too. Although this looks a little bit more dire for us. Still, I'm gonna go with defense and get out as many people as possible. But hey, we rescued more than were killed, so... It's not entirely bad. Oh, damn it, but it's his now. Okay, next thing I gotta protect is this island here then. And this part too, I guess. Oh well. Well then, let's fight this one. Shall I give it to him now? I guess. Oh, let's just do this. I don't want to do this by myself now. Oh no, really? He lost? Oh, what the hell. Oh great, now we have a problem, I think. Um, okay, so the cannon is definitely going onto the island now. They have a cannon, they have... Maybe I'll just gonna put the troops here too. Now it should be okay. Maybe some infantry there. I mean, they did pretty good back then. They're holding up pretty good. But these guys aren't looking too good here. So let's stock them up a little bit. And I guess this guy gets comes there. Let's hope that no one dies. Although there will be a lot dying. The style clearly wanted to motivate you to make a move. Throughout the city, women are refusing to work. They will only resume their duties once their leader confirms we have signed the declaration. An, uns an insufficient labor force will have a detrimental effect on our defenses. We cannot allow this to last. Ooh. France has changed irreversibly. The last bastion of inequality is falling and trying to stop it would be unreasonable. Gaining support from the women of Paris is essential for your continued battle against the enemy. Your signature will be an expression of true equality and act of brotherhood. You will not be blackmailed because it is you who does the blackmailing. You destroy your enemies and are undefeated. Who needs women? Let them stay at home. That is their place anyway. Except this style. She should be locked up in the cell we have prepared for her. I wonder if she will be as stubborn with her head placed beneath the guillotine's blade. I think I'm obviously going to sign this. I mean, this won't make me too popular among the men, I guess. Okay, I mean... So far... We have saved more than we've lost, but I don't know how long we can keep up with this.
Oh, it's another case today. Not bad. Well, we are going to do this in the next episode. Um, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time.